Hi, I'm Ali and welcome to the China Repair Studio. So today I thought I would do some paint mixing so we can actually get the right colour here ready for using on the airbrush. And I was about to start airbrushing, I'd mixed the paint and I thought actually I need to show you guys what colour combinations I've used to actually blend this in with this. I also have a little tip, quite a good little tip at the end, um, to show you what I would suggest and recommend you do when you're airbrushing something such as a bowl or a vase. So before I do though, if you haven't subscribed before, please subscribe, please like and please share and let's get going. Right. So here we are, we have our little vase here. As I said before, it is one of a pair, but I thought I'd just demonstrate it on here. Now, what's your need for the colour combination to mix the paint up will be just a something, a small little bottle lid, which I tend to mix paint in. Um, I collect these through milk bottles. A couple of brushes here. These are sable brushes, which I would highly recommend some water and some ceramic glaze now the glaze i use is a rustins here we are ceramic glaze there is another one from winsor newton now when you do have a glaze for instance it does harden very quickly so what i tend to do is i decant some into a small jar so i don't actually use this very often and i just keep using the small jar because it does dry very fast and if you keep dipping in and dipping out with say something like this it's not going to last very long so just put a little bit into a jar and just write down what it is so you know what it is and that's a really useful tip now the colours I'm going to use for this are um, Mars Black now I tend to use when I'm airbrushing Winsor and Newton Professional Acrylic I do find if you use acrylics, they go through so much easier than powder pigments through the airbrush. So I'm going to use Mars Black. You can barely see it here, and I'm towards the end of it. Some titanium white. A little bit of cerulean blue. And I've just got here just a little bit of yellow ochre. The top has actually come off and come away, so I do actually put it in, wrap it in little bit of cling film just to get the, keep the air out of it. So what I'm going to do first is I like to use the base and looking at this the main base is obviously white so I will get my white titanium and I'm going to mix just a little bit in here. Now I do have cocktail sticks which are very useful or if you can get hold of some spatulas, they're good as well. But just a little bit of a cocktail stick. Just add a little bit in there. Remember to always put the lid on straight away so it doesn't dry out too much. And then I'll just give that a bit of a go there. And then I'm going to add um, next a little bit of the blue. And when I look at it, I can see in the light it's not pure white. It's got a hint of blue to it. So... I'm just going to take another cocktail stick from my jaw here and add a little bit of that in as well. And it really is trial and error. Just keep going along with it, keep adding bits and pieces. Obviously every item is a different colour and so it's really just playing around with the colour. At this point I'm just going to add a little bit of water in. And I'm going to mix it up. Now, when, you, you, when you're getting your paint ready for airbrushing, you really want it to be the right consistency. If it's too thick, it's not going to go through the airbrush. And if it's too fine, you'll find that it will start to pull after a while. When you're airbrushing, you will end up with drips and it will just split apart from the water from the paint. So you want to get its consistency just right. And I'm afraid it is trial and error. Now I do find airbrushes are quite tricky. Now I'm going to add at this point a little bit of my yellow ochre 
and what I find useful about this colour, it does tend to knock things back slightly and it's a really good colour, a little bit goes a long way and it's it, I use it for most items to be honest, it's one of the most useful colours. So I'll just wrap it back up there and then we've added that and then I'll just use a small brush here and then just give it a little mix. As you can see, it needs a little bit of black and a little bit more blue. And what I would do is I would just keep playing around with the colours until I've got the combination right. Just add a little bit, so I don't want too much in there. You can always add more. I do think it needs a little bit more blue as well. It may not even need so much black. If you, if you can just get a little bit of paper or something where you can just scrape bits off, even better. Or a tile is quite useful. If you can have a white tile, it's even better because you can see the colour properly. Right, a little bit of blue there as well. And I will just keep mixing. And then once I've got the right colour combination, I would actually then add in the ceramic glaze last. Then when you start to look at the colour and it starts to, when you think you're almost there, what's a good point of reference is, is to actually take your brush and take your item and just paint it somewhere very lightly. I can see I'm painting it and the colour kind of blends in so I know it's a fairly fairly good colour. It could do with maybe just a tiny little bit more white and then you can just wipe over. It's maybe a tiny little bit more white and I think that will be ready. So again I would just take my titanium my titanium white, add a little bit more white to the mix and I think we'll be roughly kind of there. Now obviously there are different types of brands of paints. Uh, Rowney a very good make. Um, but I do like the professional ranges on the acrylics. I do find that the pigment uh, is stronger and better. And actually that's a better consistency now. So once it's thoroughly mixed in, again, just give it just another little go. So you've got a point of reference and just give it a little dab. And that's a really good colour. I don't know if you can see there. When I'm dabbing it, it's almost the colour of the background, which is what we want for here. So I'm just going to rub that off with my finger. So what we're going to do, once that's almost ready, I want to then get the ceramic glaze. So here we are, tiny bit here. Now when you're mixing ceramic glaze in with your paints for an airbrush, you, you really don't want it to be more than say 10%, otherwise it will clog the airbrush up and it will be too thick and you'll have to start all over again. Um, airbrushes are very temperamental so I do like to just you know just add a tiny bit not even 10% just something to latch it on just one little bit there and that's I find is all I need and then again use this the larger one now just give it a good mix check the consistency not too thick not too runny enough to go in and to go through and when, when I'm happy with that, I will then put it in the airbrush, ready for airbrushing. Now, as I said, as a little bonus, as well as getting the paint colours ready, when you actually have something like a vase or something which is quite small in the base, when it comes to airbrushing inside here, when you're airbrushing inside, you get a lot of air and it tends to basically act like a vacuum. It will go in and it will puff out. And so you can end up with ridges and it's not very easy to airbrush inside vases. So what I would highly recommend is to take either some tissue or kitchen roll. Just take a little bit off and actually put it into your vase. It doesn't have to go in too deep, just as far as where it stops, where you need to actually airbrush. So, a little bit more. I'll just put it all in and just see where that takes us there. So, 
when you've got for instance once you've put the the paper in here the kitchen roll when you actually come to airbrush you're not getting the air right into the bars and so you'll find it a lot easier um, to airbrush inside here with having some kitchen roll inside as I say it depends how deep it goes this stops just here so I'm stopping the air the so I'm putting the kitchen roll just there so I can airbrush in here quite comfortably without it sort of dragging into the vase and out again so there we are how to get our paint mixed ready for our airbrushing of our vases I do have the other vase but I just thought I'd demonstrate just show you against with this vase again if you haven't subscribed before please subscribe please like and please share and I will see you in the next video Okay, bye.